Uh, Bill, wake up! The carriage is on fire! That's only funny when I do it to you. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Uh, bit too much Bowlingworth ale is all. That stuff really creeps up on you. Sorry I couldn't join you, but I was long overdue for a quiet night in with Addie. That's fine. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. <laughs> Hell, maybe Adelaide can even join us. It's been ages since she last drank me under the table. I'm afraid she mostly sticks to tea these days. Miles, what exactly is it we're looking into? Uh, I may have dozed off during the briefing. <laughs> you sleep through the briefings? Sure. It's really not that difficult. Snelling's monotonous drone works better than cold tits emulsified soporific. Very funny. Anyway, it's a burglary at the Hambrook Flower Shop. A burglary, eh? How dull. Eh, at least we'll have enough time to get a drink afterwards. You seem awfully certain of that. I am. In fact, I'd bet the devil my head that we're done within the hour. Well, the devil's gonna be disappointed that his winnings are so meager. Ah, we've arrived. After you, Bill. Thank you. Keep the change. And so, our night of excitement begins. You more than anyone else should know that there's rarely a dull night in Chumley. I have a feeling tonight will be the exception. Until we get to the pub, that is. Keep your mind on the case, Bill. Now let's get a move on. He's just pacing back and forth, muttering to himself. Probably one of the patients from Riverview. Seems like there's more of them on the streets than in the asylum these days. An all too common sight in this part of town. Sad to say, it hasn't really changed much since I was a boy. Bill, could I have a word? What's on your mind, Fordham? A burglary at a flower shop. Not the most thrilling case we've had, is it? If I didn't know any better, I'd say Snelling's been giving us the boring cases lately on purpose. Why would he do something like that? He's eyeing a promotion to chief of police. He'd sell his own mother's cane if he thought it would help. Plus, there's no secret he doesn't like us. I can't understand why. I've shown him nothing but respect. It's because you're too good at what you do. And because you're friends with me. What's that got to do with anything? Not everyone is as open-minded as you, Miles. Let's... Just leave it at that. You ever miss living out here, Bill? About as much as you missed stepping in that pile of horseshit last week. I was distracted by that story you were telling me about your sister. How's she doing out west, anyway? Well, she's not in the chum, so... Fantastic. Living here was about as fun as wearing a vest made of meat to a dogfight. I'm glad we both managed to get out. Oh, and by the way, Miles, you didn't do such a great job of cleaning your shoes. Hmm... That would explain all the funny looks I've been getting. Still feeling rough, Bill? Yes. But I'll feel better once this case is finished and we can go down to the Angel for a pint or four. Hair of the dog? No better medicine. Let's get back to it. All right. Looks like they've had some trouble with vandalism. Pretty much every business in this part of town has. That reminds me. I should pick up a bouquet for Addie when we're done here. Seems like you've been spending more time with me than with her lately. I sure hope she's not the jealous type. Certainly looks cozy in there. Plants have a nice way of doing that. Come on, Bill. Charming little place, isn't it? Charming, but empty. We need to find the owner. Always so to the point, Fordham. If ever there was a better time to stop and smell the flowers. I think I'll leave that to you, Bill. With my allergies? Hardly.
Be right there. Oh, hello, gentlemen. I must say you caught me by surprise. I was preparing to close soon. May I help you find anything? The flowers in the center display are half price this week, and I have a special on chrysanthemums today. Or perhaps a custom bouquet for the special ladies in your lives? I have no need myself, but uh, maybe Adelaide would appreciate a little something. Eh, Miles? Those peonies in the corner look nice. I'm afraid we're not here as customers tonight, ma'am. We'd like to have a word with the proprietor. Is he in? I see. I am Cecilia Handbrook, and this is my shop. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm Detective Miles Fordham, and this is my partner, William Legere. We received a report of a burglary at your store. A report? From whom? I never contacted the police before, and I didn't this time, either. It was made anonymously. But are you saying this isn't the first time it's happened? Correct. It's happened three times. But considering the police hard to care about the daily muggings and vandalisms around here, I didn't think they would be interested in something so... trivial. Well, we're here now, and we'll do all we can to help you. We'll have to see about that. If you wouldn't mind, Mrs. Handbrook, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Very well, Detective. Could you give me the details concerning the burglaries? About three weeks ago on Monday, I noticed that my order of Easter lilies was missing. At first, I thought nothing of it. Sometimes certain types of flowers are unavailable or arrive in poor condition. These things happen. Then two weeks ago on Wednesday, it happened again. But this time, I noticed something rather odd. Go on. When I opened the shop, there were six crowns and ten shillings on the counter. That's exactly the cost of two orders of lilies. Last Friday, it happened yet again. The lilies were missing, and there was payment for one order on the counter. I believe that someone has been breaking into my shop after hours, taking the lilies, and leaving money behind. How unusual. Have you noticed any suspicious characters lurking around? Detective Fordham, this is Chumley. You can't throw a stone without hitting a suspicious character. And if you've noticed my window, you'd be aware that stones get thrown around quite a bit in this neighborhood. If you're looking for trouble, you're far more likely to find it out there than in here. I meant if you'd seen anyone out of the ordinary near your shop. Only the two men from the police who entered it tonight. That is most definitely out of the ordinary. Have you found any evidence of a break-in? No, the front door is always locked. My assistant Trevor and I are the only ones with the key. Are there any other points of access to the building? The upstairs windows, I suppose, but I make sure to keep them locked, and neither of them have been broken. Would you allow us to have a look upstairs? <sighs> is that really necessary? I was just about to close up the shop. It won't take but a moment. Fine, I suppose you may, but please, don't dally too long. So, this burglar has been paying for the stolen goods? That would appear to be the case, yes. I really don't think this could even be considered a crime. That's one of the reasons I didn't bother reporting it to the police. And the other reasons? Oh, I think I've already made those quite clear, Detective. You mentioned your assistant has the other shop key. What can you tell me about him? His name is Trevor Hastings, and he has been working for me for the past ten years. Do you trust him? Implicitly. I've known him for ages, and he has been my full-time assistant since shortly after my husband died. You're not suggesting he had anything to do with this, are you? Not at all. I would like to speak with him, though. Where might I find him? It's Friday, so he should be on his way back from the docks right now. He'll be bringing my flower order within the hour. Good. We'll meet him here, then. If that's all right with you. I suppose I don't really have much of a choice, do I? Have you been in business long? Yes. I opened the shop 30 years ago, along with my late husband, David. But the past 10 years, I've been running things on my own. Don't you feel unsafe being here by yourself so late into the night? Detective? When you've lived in this part of town as long as I have, it takes quite a lot to scare you. 
I think that's all the information I need for now. All right, detective. Not too many left. Seems business isn't so bad around here. Well, you know what they say. There are only three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and people taking advantage of sales. It says private. Well, that's one mystery solved. Interesting choice of decor in here. Perhaps it wasn't always used as a storeroom, although I can understand why it would have been converted. Yeah, it is rather drafty in here. I've seen this type of device before. It's a special container for growing plants. Specific temperature and water conditions can be adjusted. Seems to be empty right now, though. And judging by the dust, it hasn't been used in a long time, if ever. It seems Mrs. Hanbrook isn't too fond of steam tech, or just doesn't understand it. Seems to be the broken pot storage area. Why not just throw them away, I wonder? It's likely they're going to be repaired. I noticed some faint cracks in some of the pots downstairs. Unmarked, but if the smell is anything to go by, this is where the flowers are stored when delivered. I'll keep my distance then. A young lady. Perhaps a relation of Mrs. Hambrook? I can see the resemblance. Sort of. Lamplight City, in all her glory. This provides a means of escape from the top floor, or access to this window from the ground. The window latch, securely locked. Lamplight City. Lamplight. Interesting. There's a gap between the window and the frame here. No wonder it's so drafty in this room. Hmm. I wonder. What are you thinking, Fordham? That it's time for an experiment. I'm going to need a tool, however. Something long and thin should do the trick. Shouldn't be too hard to find something like that around here. Pastoral landscape. Definitely nowhere near here. I've never much understood art, but it would be nice to see a place like that in person. I don't think this window would serve. It's a nice view, though. You can hardly see the vomit and manure piles on the street from up here. I would imagine that keeping a consistent temperature in here is important for the flowers. When do you suppose this contraption was last serviced? Hard to say. Definitely not recently, if the dust buildup is any indication. Mostly a bunch of fertilizer and growth tonics. Growth tonics, eh? Plant growth tonics, Bill? Of course. I knew that. These seem to be part of the watering system for the flowers. I haven't seen old piping like this in a while. Seems like someone's reluctant to upgrade. 
I have a few more questions for you, Mrs. Hambrook. Very well, Detective. If it will help you... Mrs. Hanbrook, were you aware that there's a gap in the frame of the small upstairs window? Is there? I only go up there to check that the window is locked. I've never noticed a gap. Are you suggesting that's how the burglar is entering the store? It's a distinct possibility, but I have yet to figure out exactly how. Well, I trust you'll come to a satisfactory conclusion, Detective. I think that's all the information I need for now. All right, Detective. Fordham, what are you doing? I was going to check inside this trash can for clues. Miles, in the 15 years we've been partners, how many times have you found something inside a trash can that wasn't garbage? Fair point. just pacing back and forth. Probably one of the patients from Riverview. Poor fellow. Looks like this better than he'd at least get fed. True enough. Looks like they've had some trouble with vandalism. Pretty much every business in this part of town has. Unmarked, but if the smell is I'll keep my a young lady. I get seems to be the broken pot. Why not just it's likely they're going. Window latch. Interesting. There's a gap. The window latch. This provides a means of escape from the top floor or access to this window from the ground. This is quite the selection. Come over here and take a whiff, Bill. Sure, if you don't mind me getting snot all over your coat. Oh, no, not the Myers case all over again. On second thought, you can just stay over there. Aha, this hook is exactly what I need. Mrs. Hanbrook, may I borrow this hook for a few minutes? It's crucial to our investigation. Is that so? Yes, I promise I'll put it back as soon as I'm done. Please do, detective. Bill, it's time for our experiment. And uh, what is this experiment going to be exactly? Simple. I'm going to see if this hook can get me inside the shop. Hmm, rather dark out here. Watch your step then. 
This experiment of yours isn't worth a broken neck. I'll be fine. Now then, could you please close and lock the window, Bill? Well, I'd say this is fairly incontrovertible proof that the building can easily be broken into without arousing suspicion. Where'd you learn how to do that, anyway? You taught me, remember? Nah. Are you sure it was me? Positive. We were a few pints in at the Angel about five years ago, and you decided I should learn how to pick locks. What else have I taught you how to do while drunk? That would be telling. Trevor. Evening, Cecilia. I've got the order ready to bring in. Trevor, these are Detectives Fordham and Legere. They say there's been a report about the burglaries, and they're here investigating. I... I only did it because I think it's been going on too long. As much as you want to, we can't handle this ourselves. We can discuss the matter later. In the meantime, the detective would like a word with you. I'll be needing to bring in the flowers first, if that's all right. Otherwise, some hooligan's likely to run off with them. My partner will keep an eye on your flowers. Bill, would you mind? Ah, the glamour of police work. Now, Mr. Hastings, if I could ask you a few questions? Go on, then. What can you tell me about the recent burglaries? I wish Cecilia had contacted you a lot sooner. She's a damn fine woman, but sometimes I think she'd rather jump in a rose bush than ask for help. Had to take matters into my own hands. This needs taken care of, and we can't do it on our own, as much as Cecilia would like to. Anyhow, all I know is someone's been making off with some flowers and leaving money behind. No idea who it could be, how they're getting in, or why they even bother paying. In my day, if you robbed a place, you did it the right way. It's a sad state of affairs when even burglars don't do their jobs correctly. Do you have much experience with burglary, Mr. Hastings? Now, I never said that, Detective. Have you noticed anyone or anything suspicious around here recently? Nothing but the usual roughnecks, ragamuffins, and drunkards. Like I said, it's a real mystery. Could you walk me through the process of your deliveries? Of course. There's no great science to it. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons, Cecilia gives me her list of flowers to pick up from the wholesalers. I head over to Gas Cone around sunset when they get their shipment, and I give them her order. They load up the crate, I pay for it, and then I lug it back here. How long does that take? Between moving the crate and getting it across the river on the ferry? A couple of hours. Usually the store is closed by then, so I use my key to get in and leave the crate inside for Cecilia to open in the morning. That's all there is to it. Told you it wasn't very complicated. Do you ever leave the crate unattended during that time? No, sir. Never more than a minute. I may be old, but I got good eyes. I'd see if there were anything amiss. Besides that, I check to make sure the crate is still sealed when I drop it off. I'm not about to let Cecilia down by being careless. How long have you been working for Mrs. Hanbrook? Been about 10 years now, I reckon. I used to help with deliveries now and then when it was her and David, her husband. But after he passed, she offered to make me her assistant. Unfortunate way to get it, but I needed the work. Used to be I had a job at one of the airship yards, but they let me go after I was injured by one of those newfangled steam machines. So the offer came at a good time. Besides that, Cecilia needed looking after, even though she'd never admit it. If I'm being honest, we're both getting a bit long in the tooth. Not sure how much longer we'll be keeping this up, but as long as I'm upright and breathing, I'll be bringing these crates along. Even if it is murder on my back. I admire your work ethic. I've got a job to do. Not enough people these days seem to respect that. Thanks for your time, Mr. Hastings. I'll let you get back to work. Appreciate it, Detective. If you don't mind, Detective, I still need to check the crate before I bring it in. Of course. Thank you again for your help.
Learn anything? Possibly. I may have an idea. Ah, oh, you're being cryptic. That's always a good sign. But if you've got a plan, let's talk about it. Oh, thank you, Detective. That's quite decent of you. Got a minute, Bill? For you, Miles, I've got five. I've heard of honor among thieves, but have you ever known a thief to pay for stolen goods? Perhaps conducting normal business is uh, just too boring for him. Do you think he might be doing it for the thrill? There could be any number of reasons. The best way to find out is to catch the culprit and ask him ourselves. What's your impression of dear old Mrs. Hanbrook? I like her. Good old-fashioned, tough-as-nails chumley woman. Reminds me of my mother. Your mother was never quite so stubborn. Why do you suppose she's so reluctant to accept our help? It's a chum thing, Miles. You wouldn't understand. Right. Based on what we've been told in our experiment, I can only conclude that our burglar is using the upstairs window to get into the shop. So what do you propose we do about it? It's happened repeatedly over the past three weeks, on one of the delivery nights. Since it has yet to occur this week, and today is Friday, Logic dictates it should be tonight. So we settle in and wait to see if the burglar returns? Catch him in the act? Exactly. It's our best chance of solving this before the trail goes cold. <sighs> and I was really looking forward to getting that drink at the Angel tonight, too. I know, but it's as you said yourself. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. Besides, forbearance is good for the soul. Spoken like someone who truly has no idea how to have any fun. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it one of these days, especially with your expert tutelage. Okay, let's go have a chat with Mrs. Hambrook. I'm sure she'll be delighted to know we're spending the night. Damn, I forgot to bring my deck of cards again. At least it's quiet up here. I'm surprised we didn't go deaf after the last time we did this. What? I said... Oh, right. Your sense of humor remains on point. Miles, have you ever considered leaving all this behind? What, you mean quitting the Force? The Force, the city... Going off and seeing what else is out there, you know? I'd miss it too much. Wouldn't you? I was thinking I might visit Harley out west. She makes it sound like a dream in her letters. Wide open spaces, fresh air. I know I'm a city boy and would probably miss New Britannia's filth and squalor after a week, but... You should do it. A change of scenery never hurt anyone. Plus, it's much easier for you than it is for me. I've got a family to consider, after all. Ah... Right. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean it like that, Bill. It's just... Shh. I think I heard something. Oh, no! Bill? <laughs> Stop! Police! Damn it! He's got up the fire escape. We can corner him on the roof. Stay close and keep me covered. Stay back, officer. I've got a knife. Ready your pistol for him. But you're too close! I trust you, Miles. Your pistol, now! There's really no need for this, officer. I respect your desire to uphold justice. Mine is more important. If you let me go, I won't come back. And we can all forget this ever happened. Don't listen to this lunatic, Miles. Take your shot before things get worse. Bill! Oh, God! I am so sorry, my friend. I am so, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs>